Well, good day, my friends, and welcome back to another segment of French Press. The idea is that just as the grounds and water need about four minutes to soak and absorb in that water, we need to soak in the presence of God. And so this is just designed to be a four-minute encouragement. And I just want to hold up this book again. I've showed this to you before, but um, Lois de Verberg um, writes some incredible things about the first century world. And this is one of her books, and I've really enjoyed this one. And I want to talk about something. Um, I want to talk about the kingdom of God really briefly today. Uh, the kingdom was the most central theme in the life and ministry of Jesus. He was constantly talking about the kingdom of God. And by that, he meant the reign of God over all the, all the earth. Not necessarily the realm, although we know that that's the heavens and the earth. But the reign of God is the kingdom of God. Where you have God's reign, you have God's kingdom. And so there's a passage that's always confused me. It comes out of Matthew 11, and it says, From the days of John the Baptist... Until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Jesus said that. And I've always been like, wait a second, Jesus, are you, like, endorsing violence? Like, is, were the crusades right? Is it, is it right to be violent in order to take the kingdom of God? What does that mean? And I've always struggled with that. Um, and Lois Tverberg in this book brings out some really interesting wisdom. She connects it with a text back in the book of Micah in the Old Covenant that says, one who breaks open the way will go before them, and they will break open the gate and go out. The king will pass through before them. The Lord is at their head. Now, the idea is this. When we think about the kingdom suffering violence and the violent taking by force, it has to do with sheep. Sheep would be put in a cave in the ancient world, and there would be a, a rock or a boulder that would be put in front of that cave. By the morning, the sheep would be so hungry that one of the sheep would go and, and together they would try to push the boulder out of the way to get out of the cave in order to eat, in order to feast, in order to graze, in order to drink water. And then the shepherd would go with them. And I think that's what Jesus is meaning is that there's a longing, there's a desire, there's a hunger that we just, it, it's, it's like this, it's not violent in a sense of, of taking it out on someone. It's that we so deeply long for the kingdom of God over everything else. We're so hungry for it that we're willing to do whatever it takes to feast on Jesus, to feast on the kingdom of God, that we don't want to settle for the empire. We don't want to settle for consumerism. We don't want to settle for the vices and the sins of this world. We want to align our lives with the kingdom of God and push into that until there's a breakthrough. Now, let me give you a metaphor, and then we'll be done for this morning. I've been thinking about the hourglass, right? That hourglass where you have all this sand, and then it goes into a tiny little little, little channel, and then it spills out. That's what I feel like the kingdom is often like. You see this, this sense where it feels like often the kingdom is bottlenecked. At least, that's how I feel right now, especially in the Western world. It feels like the kingdom of God is frustrated. We feel frustrated. Our neighbors feel frustrated. This pandemic is frustrating. All of the things that come with it are frustrating. And yet the way the kingdom works is that we have these periods, sometimes long periods of, of desert, frustration, lament, pain, and then all of a sudden there'll be breakthrough and we'll just, the sand will come down, right? And that's just the metaphor I've been feasting on of just saying, okay, Lord, like how do I, how do I take refuge knowing that right now I don't feel like your kingdom is bursting through? I feel like I'm trapped in a tiny little channel and that I'm not breaking through into your kingdom. And so I think the invitation in this season is no matter where you are, to have patience, to have joy in the midst of whatever sorrow that you're carrying, and to know that there is a day coming where their breakthrough will be happening. But right now, I feel like many of us feel like we're in this little frustrated, tiny channel. And so may you be patient. May you have joy in the midst of whatever suffering you're facing. And go back to that passage we looked at at 2 Corinthians 4. We do not lose heart. Do not be seduced into losing heart. That there will be a moment when the kingdom, haparets, will break through. So may you be encouraged today and may you follow Jesus.